Okay, uh, this is going to be about poisoned arrows, okay, in North America. Are, are there any references or is there any proof that poisoned arrows were used in, the, in North America? And the answer is yes. Uh, there are some. Uh, the first thing that pops into my head is there, there is an, an account of Apaches using poisoned arrows and they have actually little dimples in the arrowheads. Uh, these particular ones I'm thinking about were made of copper, I think, copper or brass, and they would put dimples actually in the surface of the arrowhead or drill slight holes or whatever to, to retain the poison in some of these arrowheads for the Apaches, right? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, Ishii was asked the same question and he said yes, they were he knows of poisons, or he knew of poisons used, and what what the process was for creating poisons in his culture was to take a piece of raw liver and a rattlesnake, and then have the rattlesnake bite into the liver, okay, and release the venom, and then you would uh, free the snake, and then set aside the liver somewhere where it can decompose, and you would use the I guess the juice from the decomposed liver mixed with the snake venom as poison for the arrowhead. Okay. And uh, I think that's, I don't know what the Apaches used for their poison. It might have also been rattlesnake. In fact, I think I did read that. Rattlesnake, was, rattlesnake venom is a common, uh, is a common enough venom that it could be used in a wide area. Okay, so I would, if, if anything, if you wanted to make a poison, you would make it out of rattlesnake venom. Okay, now, do I know of anything else that can be used? Uh, the only other thing that I can think of that's extremely easy to use is uh, human spit. If you just spit on the arrowhead, I know it sounds kind of silly, but... Bacteria in the human mouth can cause infections, very serious infections, just with a bite. A human bite can cause very serious infections. So if you put saliva on an arrowhead, you can cause a very serious infection uh, when you hit somebody with the arrow. Okay, that would be the easiest thing I can think of. Now, there's also the issue of uh, how can you tell if a certain arrowhead was made to be poisoned or not? Okay, that's an interesting question. I think many of these serrated arrowheads are in fact designed to hold poison in the serrations. Okay, maybe just psychologically. Because the serrations don't seem to have a lot of effect, especially on a very small arrowhead, on the wound itself. So it may have been that serrations one of the reasons why they were used is to hold poison in the crevices uh, of, of the arrow, of the arrowhead, okay? Um, so that's, that's one thing. Other than that, I don't know of any other sign that an arrowhead would be poisoned uh, other than, let's say you used a reed arrowhead that had, you know, a hollow, you just point, uh, cut a point onto the reed and then that hollow area could contain poison within the hollow area so that would just be a wooden type point with a you can either drill out the pith and like a syringe right a large syringe and, and put poison in that that way but I think it wouldn't be as effective as if you poisoned a stone arrowhead okay because the stone cuts a lot better penetrates a lot deeper than wood or bone okay I don't know about a lot deeper but it is extremely effective. Now, uh, I think that's as far as my research went on poisoned arrows. Do I think they were common? I'm beginning to think more and more that, yes, uh, they were common in, the North, in North America, especially in the South or anywhere where you have a, a large population where you wanted to preserve your territory. You don't want anyone messing with you, so you poison your arrows. It's a deterrent for sure. 
on anyone messing with you. They don't, especially, well, you think of stories of the Amazon jungle where you have uh, people with blowguns and poison darts, and you don't want to go in there and mess with those kinds of people, all right? The Native Americans or Native South Americans in those areas had poison darts. You don't want to mess with them. That's the general concept, okay? And I think it existed in North America as well. And the more I look into it, the more it makes sense that that was probably one of the main strategies for deterrence, uh, prevent strangers from coming into your area looking for trouble, okay? Now, I know trade and trade routes were extremely common. So as, if you were not armed, I don't think that you, were, you had any difficulties moving from one area to the next. But if you were armed, I think that you were asking for someone to ambush you with a poisoned arrow or a, a war party looking for armed strangers would ambush you with poisoned arrows of some sort, poison from somewhere. Um, and uh, I, I think uh, you guys can use your imagination and I don't want to discuss exactly all these nasty things you could put on the arrowheads that can be used to create infections or poisons for the body, uh, but you, I think you get the idea. So yeah, I do think it was very common, no, I don't know, maybe not very common, but I do think it was uh, something that is more common that than is led on in many of these uh, studies that are done on Native American arrowheads, um, especially the serrated type. Okay? All right.